All right, in this video, we're going to introduce the first of the two derivative tests. We're also going to talk about how to analyze the first derivative to determine whether your function is increasing or decreasing on certain intervals. So to get us started, I've placed how to use the first derivative to find increasing and decreasing intervals, and then our test for using the first derivative to find local max and local mins. I'll go through these real fast, these explanations, and I'll do a couple examples showing how we're gonna implement these concepts. All right, let's first talk about intervals of increasing or decreasing. Before we start, we need to assume that f is continuous and differentiable on this interval. But if our first derivative is positive on this interval a, b, then we say f is increasing on that interval. If our derivative is negative, we say it's decreasing on that interval. If we remember the concept of a derivative telling us the slope of a function, this should make sense, right? For positive slopes, or when our derivative is greater than zero, we're an increasing function or sloping up. When our function has a negative slope, our values are going down from left to right. So in the examples you'll see, what we're going to do is take the first derivative and then determine where the sign changes happen for our derivative. You're going to notice throughout this, we're going to be using those critical numbers that we just recently talked about. So connected to the idea of increasing and decreasing, we have the first derivative test. So again, we have a function f that's continuous and differentiable on a certain interval, and we're going to look now at a critical number c. Remember, the critical numbers occur when our first derivative is either zero or undefined. It's also important to point out in this example right here, our function might not be defined or might not be differentiable, excuse me, at C, though that's okay if it's differentiable everywhere else around C. The first part of the first derivative test says that is if the derivative changes from positive to negative at that X value of C, then C must be a local max. Just to quickly clarify what that first statement is saying, it's saying for x values before c, if our, our first derivative is positive, then we must be increasing in some way. And if after c, our function is decreasing, all we're saying then is at c, it must have reached a peak or it must have reached a local maximum value. So the second part says just the opposite. If our function was decreasing or if our first derivative was negative before c, and then after c, our derivative is now positive, meaning we're increasing, we must be at this valley at c or at this local minimum value. Lastly, if our derivative does not change sign at c, so if before c it's positive, let's say, and then after c it's positive, or vice versa with negative and negative, then there is no local max or local min at c. All right, let's now do some examples to make some sense of what these say and how to use them. All right, here we have our first example, f of x equals 4x cubed plus 3x squared minus 6x plus 1. Again, before I get into this, we have these two things where we're going to find the intervals of decreasing and increase and the local max and min. But it's important to me to remember that these really aren't two separate things. They're the exact same things. When I find the intervals of increasing or decreasing or when I'm using the first derivative test, I'm actually doing exactly the same work. So here's what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to identify the first derivative. And in this case, I'm simply using the power rule to get 12x squared plus 6x minus 6. Now what I'm going to do is identify the critical numbers. So in this case, I'm going to set this equal to 0 and solve. Um, I'm first going to factor out a 6 to get 2x squared plus 1x minus 1. Then I'll just solve this by factoring to get 6 times 2x minus 1 times x plus 1, giving me zeros for my first derivative at 1 half and negative 1. So again, what I've found here, by, by setting my first derivative equal to 0, I've found my critical numbers. Again, critical numbers could appear when my function is undefined, but this first derivative was a polynomial, which is defined for all real numbers. All right, so now what I'm going to do is create a sign chart for my first derivative. This will help me tackle the idea of increasing and decreasing intervals and help me implement the first derivative test. 
By the way, this method of using a sign chart, this should feel similar to when you were solving polynomial inequalities. And this is actually what we're doing. We're, we're being asked is when is this, this function right here, 12x squared plus 6x minus 6, when is it positive and when's it negative? We first identify when it's zero. In this case, in calculus, we're calling those critical numbers. But again, all those are, are when this polynomial right here is zero. What I'm then going to do is simply pick test points in these intervals created by these critical numbers and find out if it's positive or negative. And so how I do this quickly, by the way, is I'm going to choose test points. So first of all, my first test point is going to be a negative 10. That will be on this interval from negative infinity up to negative 1. And what I'm going to do is plug negative 10 into my function. Though quickly for me, the fastest way to do this is to plug negative 10 into the factored form. I don't care what the actual value is. All I care about if it's negative or positive. So when I plug negative 10 in for x here, I know that this, so 2 times negative 10 minus 1, that's definitely going to be a negative number. When I plug a negative 10 into here, I'm going to get a negative 9. So I have a negative times a negative times a positive, meaning the sign of this polynomial on this interval here is a positive. Between negative 1 and 1 half, I think the easiest test point to plug in would be a 0. When I plug in 0 for my x into my polynomial here, I get a positive 1. This would be negative, and then I have a positive 6. So it's positive, negative, positive, meaning I would get a negative value out. Finally, in this last interval after 1 half, I'm going to plug in a positive 10. When I plug in a positive 10, this is positive, that's positive, that's positive. Multiplying three positive values together gives me positive. Again, I know I did that fairly quickly. I want to emphasize, if you're having any trouble with this, you should search for resources on polynomial or nonlinear inequalities. And why you would search for nonlinear inequalities is what we're going to do is trying to find the signs of these equations or functions that aren't linear. The way to do that are to find zeros or where it's undefined. You create these intervals separated by those points or our critical numbers that we're calling them now. Then you choose test points from the representative intervals. Again, when I have negative 1 and 1 half, my intervals are negative infinity to negative 1, from negative 1 to 1 half, and 1 half to infinity. I don't have to plug in a bunch of different values. The only way that this polynomial changes sign from positive to negative is at the zeros or when it's undefined. Now we've really done all the work we need. We have our sign chart for the first derivative, which will help us answer both of these questions right here. First of all, A, our function is increasing on the intervals for which our, our first derivative is positive, which is from negative infinity to negative 1 and from 1 half to infinity. Our function is only decreasing between negative 1 and 1 half. Now we're doing the work of identifying our local max and min. We're going to use our first derivative test. So when the first derivative changes from positive to negative at a critical value, that is a local max. In this case right here at negative 1, this is a local max, or a local max occurs at negative 1. Then here at 1 half, the sign of our first derivative goes from negative to positive. That means this is a local min. I want to make sure I emphasize the point that the local max occurs at negative 1, but the value of that local max is actually the value we get when we plug negative 1 back into our original function. And when I plug negative 1 back into my original function, I get a 6, which is my local max value. And to find the value of my local min, I'm plugging in my 1 half into my original function, and I get negative 3 fourths. All right, for our second example, we'll tackle something that's not strictly just a polynomial, so we can make sure we understand this concept. Again, we're being asked to identify the intervals of increasing or decreasing and identify the local max and mins. All right, in order to take the first derivative of g of x here, we're going to use the product rule. First thing I'm going to do is just leave the negative out front here as I do this. And so I'm going to take the derivative of x squared, which is 2x, and multiply that by e of x. And then I'm going to take the derivative of e of the x and multiply that by x squared. All right, next thing I'm going to do is factor out as much as I can. So I have this negative here. 
I can factor out an x from each term and an e to the x. That would leave me in this case with a 2 plus an x. Again, I'm factoring this after differentiating in order to make my life easier when I'm finding my zeros and when I'm working with my sign chart. So to find my critical values, what I'm going to do is set this equal to zero and find what x values make this zero. Importantly, when I'm analyzing this in its factored form, I'm going to analyze each factor here separately. For the first factor, x, well, this is zero, obviously, when x equals zero. The second factor, e to the x, importantly, e to the x is a strictly positive function. e to the x is never zero, so I don't get a zero from this factor right here. And this last factor, 2 plus x, is zero at x equals negative 2. And again, to complete my sign chart, I use the factored form because I feel it's a lot quicker. I'm going to use test points. And now I have these intervals from negative infinity to negative 2, between negative 2 and 0, and then 0 to infinity. For the negative infinity to negative 2, I always like using negative 10. It makes it easier for me. I plug negative 10 into each of these factors. Importantly, as I've noted here and previously stated, this e to the x factor, this is always positive. So I can basically ignore that when I'm doing this analysis. When I plug in negative 10 into this right here, negative negative 10 is positive. This, when I plug in a negative 10, it's negative. So I will get a positive times a positive times a negative, giving me a negative for this interval. I'll plug in a negative 1 for the interval between negative 2 and 0 as my test point. When I get a negative 1, this is positive. This is always positive. 2 minus 1 is a positive number, so this interval is positive for the first derivative. Finally, I'll plug in a 10 here in this last interval. When I plug in a 10, this is negative, this is positive, this is positive, so positive, positive, negative would give me negative. So as for both of these, the increasing and decreasing and the local max and mins, all I'm looking for is the sign chart for my derivative function. And when I analyze this, I would first say this function is decreasing from negative infinity up to negative 2 and from zero to infinity. It's increasing only between negative two and zero. I would also say that at negative two, there is a local minimum value because it's going from negative to positive at that critical number of negative two. At zero, the sign of my derivative switches from positive to negative, so this is a local maximum. So again, now that I have my sign chart, the real work is done. All I need to do is analyze it to answer these two questions. My function is increasing between negative 2 and 0 because my first derivative is positive. This function is decreasing from negative infinity up to negative 2 and also from 0 to infinity. I have a local maximum value here at x equals 0, and that value, when I plug a 0 into my original function, is a local maximum value of 0. I have a local minimum at x equals negative 2, as we identified, and when I plug in negative 2 into my original function, I got that it's negative 0.54. And because this is a more interesting function, again, than maybe a normal polynomial, let's look at a graphical representation of this function right here. And as you notice, we can verify what's going on here. That function is decreasing from negative infinity to negative 2 and from 0 to infinity. It's increasing on that little interval from negative 2 to 0. You can see that local maximum value there at 0 of an output of 0. And then we have that local minimum value at negative 2.